This video is sponsored by Full Reptile Collective, brought to you by Dan Hardy. Head over to their website at fullreptile.co.uk where you can find anything from training gear, t-shirts, hoodies, all the way to coffee. For an exclusive 10% off, use Dan Said So at checkout. Make sure to also check out their YouTube channel for some of the best MMA content out there, bar my own. Let's get back to the video. Right, 26th of March, guys, we have Askar Askarov facing off against Kai Car France. And this is a fight that a lot of people are looking forward to. This is on a UFC fight night in Vegas. Is It's going to be 50 or 51, isn't it, uh, at this point? 51, I believe. Is it 51? Yeah, I mean, Kai Car is... Um, route to a title shot you know it's looking quite promising if he can get past Asker askarov here because very competitive fight against brendan moreno and beat tyson nam convincingly lost to brandon roy Val, but was competitive in the first round and then had bontering riding his back for a whole round and then ko'd him in one shot and then the standout name on the resume now is cody garbrandt even though he's on the decline it's still a phenomenal name to have an ex-champion that has legit one shot knockout power for that weight class. So it's a dangerous one for Kai because Askar Askarov, I mean, do you want to talk about Askar Askarov? Because I think I could rant for 20 minutes about how good he is. Yep. Yep. That well, first off, definitely I feel like this is the title eliminator. Has to be. Yeah. Right. Kai has been, you know, killing it for I think he's got two wins in a row. And then Askarov is was probably going to be the next guy to begin with. Um, but the fact that they're pairing them together, I have no problem with that. But Askarov is very, very, very legit. He only has four fights in the UFC, and every single one of them are big name guys. You get he gets his UFC debut against Brandon Moreno, goes yeah. to a draw with him, which ages phenomenally. Yeah, and then it's wins over Tim Elliott, Pantoja, and Joseph Benavides. Yeah, and. What stands out to me is he is a part of this um, this new age talent, um, the Islam Mahachevs, um, the Magomed Ankalaevs, where the guy can strike. He's a mm -hmm. very good striker. We've seen that in pretty much all of his fights. And his grappling and wrestling is phenomenal. So he yeah. is just the all-around mixed martial artist, and he's just he's just terrifying. He really is. It's going to be a problem for pretty much anyone in this division, not just Kai Car France, but I actually believe Askarov to be a legitimate contender and potential future champ. Absolutely. And you think of people that have, like I was talking about, because it's UFC London week, obviously, I was talking about how bad a, a horrible match up Jai Herbert's had since he's coming to the UFC, you know, getting Trinaldo in your debut to getting Moicano in your second fight. Like, that's as a horrible intro to the UFC, but. You know, Askar Askarov, to get Brandon Moreno on your debut, obviously it's not the Brandon that is current. It was when he was up and down, just coming back off being cut from the UFC. But then getting Tim Elliott, challenged for a title. So you've got Brandon Moreno, ex-champion. Tim Elliott, challenged for a title, won the ultimate fighter to get that title shot. Pantoja won that ultimate fighter. Uh, came second, I think, actually. No, didn't he? Something like that. But it was he was seeded rank one, and he is the dark horse in his division for me. And I thought... Askar Askarov was probably going to call out Pantoja. I'm not sure where Pantoja is at right now, but dominated Pantoja, in my opinion, which is no easy feat. And then to get Benavidez, who is, he's probably in the list of one of the best guys never to win a belt. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he reminds me of Uriah Hall a little bit, not Uriah Hall, Uriah Faber, um, a little bit in just how he, how, how he fights and performs and, and just is always the nearly man, unfortunately. And if it wasn't for DJ, he would be champion. He would have had a belt. It's a, uh, it's a fight where Asuka, to me, has all the tools to beat Kai Kara convincingly and dominantly. And Kai's kind of got a Derek Lewis approach to this division for me, where he could get absolutely torn apart, mauled for a whole round, two rounds. But he's got that one-shot knockout power. You don't see him flyweights very often. And he's got an absolute kettlebell for a right hand that he fires... Um, in bunches. It's not just a one-shot. It's accumulative shots. It's measured... He's not afraid to hang in the pocket. But what worries me is that if Bontering can hang on to your back for five, nearly five minutes with a bad weight cut and gassed, what's Askar Askarov going to do for you over three rounds if you can't put him away? A guy that has great hands, as you said, a phenomenal wrestler, chain wrestler as well, 
scrambles mm. for days. Remember against Brandon Moreno, they were scrap. That was a fun fight to watch. If anyone hasn't seen yeah. that fight, go back and watch it because I think a draw is actually fair for that fight. There's not many fights I would say get draws that deserve them, but that is definitely one. Uh, <clears throat> he also, go on, mate. <laughs> my, my voice goes. I'm so excited <laughs> to talk. Go on, you go for it. Oh. No, that's um. <sighs> It stinks because this is stylistically, it's just, it's going to be very tough for Kai Kara France because we've literally seen the weakness with like Bontarine was able to hold him down for what, like two or three minutes during that first round. And then he gets caught and loses. But at the, the Brandon Roy Val fight, Kai almost finishes that fight early on, but Roy Val's just, you know, an absolute psycho and eventually gets a submission there. So I think <clears throat> yeah. we know the weakness. And he's a, you know, he's a city kickboxing guy, right? So he's training with some of the best strikers. Generally, I think we've seen that they don't have a great wrestling or grappling background. So if you know if As Askarov is smart, he's not going to stand on the feet in trade, which I fear a little bit because I think he is confident. Um, yeah. But that's where he's going to lose the fight. And I just yeah, I, I am overall going to pick Askarov in this fight because of that reason. Um, but yeah, Car France having that legitimate knockout power, which we just you do not see outside of like Devis and Figueredo yeah. um, is just generally terrifying and I love it. And I want car France to win so bad. I just don't, <laughs> this is just not the fight for him. Yeah. It's a head and heart moment, isn't it? You, you could just Kai's such a good guy. He's the Dan hooker of the flyweights, isn't he? Really? He's, he's racked up the losses. He's an experienced individual, but he's just I, just, I just think this might be his ceiling, you know, the top five gatekeeper. I, I don't see him beating somebody like Pantoja. Um, you know, even a Roy Val Figueredo, I think would 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 punish someone like Kai when he misses quite considerably. And Moreno just has too much activity for someone like Kai Kai in a, in, in a fight again. So, yeah, I think I think Askar Askarov is definitely going to open as a major favorite in this, and not just because he's a a, a Russian wrestler by trade, but not <laughs> not only that as well. Is when he takes you down. I just want to add this note because it's highlighted on my notepad. He tries to finish the fight. He snatches necks. He doesn't just lay and pray like a lot of guys do. He will. He's that new breed, as you say, the Umars, the Islams, where they will get you to the floor, but then they will grab a neck. They will grab a kumura. They will try and finish the fight and not just grind out a three-round decision. Um, you know, he's he's only got decisions on his record, but he's trying for these things, which is where the scrambles came into it against Pantoja and Moreno. So, I think I think an obvious choice would probably be that Kai can survive and that's it. He's a survivor for this fight. Um, but at any point, if Askar Askarov gets too confident, Kai is going to switch his lights off. And that's, that's the, the you know, he's not a one trick pony, but the trick he does have is a damn good one, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. I think it is worth noting. Yeah. Askarov doesn't have the finishes right now in the UFC, but all of the guys he's facing are well-rounded. So yeah. the submission maybe hasn't been there. Whereas with Car France, you know, he's been submitted before. It's, I think it's going to be there. I think it's definitely going to be there. So I would even say an Askarov by submission is not a bad choice at all. And I just checked the odds. Um, Askarov is about a three to one favorite, which is definitely, definitely makes sense. It makes sense. It seems fair to me. So we're both going Askarov by decision, are we? I'll I'll go with the submission. I think uh, you know he's due for a finish there, and I think it's going to be there with Cara France. So I'll, I'll take submission. Yeah, even with Cara France's good submission defense as well, you still think he he's got enough to get him. Yeah, I mean Roy Val's tricky because he's uh, like that tall, lanky frame. Yeah, so I, he's kind of built for those submissions. Um, Askarov is not particularly that way, but. You know, I like you said, he sticks like glue when he's on you. He, I, he could easily snatch a neck. So I I think you go either decision or submission for sure. Awesome. Well, let us know, guys, in the comments below who you think is going to win. If you think it is going to be Askar Askarov as well, I'd be surprised um, if people legitimately think that Kai is going to knock him out because I think Askar's too smart for that. But it's definitely a dangerous fight for Askar. It's, you know, he's he's having a tough run for this belt. But if he gets there, it'll be <laughs> one of the most deserved runs ever. For yep. the belt. So awesome.